Hey there, carnivore fam. This is Amber from Amber and Dan's Carnivore Life. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. For all my subscribers, welcome back. I am so glad you're with me today because I have a new recipe to share with y'all. Um, so it is officially the uh, July 27th, so we're almost to the end of uh, the Triple B&E Challenge for the month of August. And I had this idea pop into my head and so I decided to run with it and it turned out it was delicious. So now I'm going to share this recipe with y'all. So it is a mostly, I would say 99.8% carnivore um, besides one ingredient, which mm, I I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys put your own take on that. But anyway, so it is carnivore Salisbury steak made with brown butter gravy and the broth is beef bone broth and it's Larry Burquist's um, recipe from Carnivore Quest. I will link that recipe in the description box so y'all can follow that one. Um, just a heads up though, the recipe, I cannot seem to get it that rich dark brown that he does. So um, for this recipe, I do have some bone broth left over from when I made it the other day. And I did add some beef bouillon to it to give it a more rich beef flavor. So with that being said, with no further ado, we're gonna get started. But first I'm gonna show you all. So right here, I went shopping this morning. I got my um, ground beef right here and I'm gonna go ahead and cook up some ground beef patties right over here on my griddle. So I'm gonna get those started. And once I got those cooked and everything, then we'll get started on the Salisbury steak, which doesn't take very long. It's a very easy, simple recipe. Um, I would say the longest, most time consuming part is the bone broth because Larry's recipe takes three days to make. So anyway, y'all stay tuned and here we go. Let's make some food. Okay, y'all, so I'm just gonna show you real quick. So I've got the griddle nice and hot here. Um, I just made 12 four ounce burger patties with my burger press. And then I have a digital scale in the kitchen. Um, if you don't have one, I recommend you get one. I think these are like $15 at Walmart. Um, I love this thing, especially because when I buy beef in bulk like this, um, we make a lot of hamburger patties out of it because it's just more, it's it's just cheaper in the long run. Yes, it can be time consuming, but we're saving more money this way. So anyway, I just got some four ounce burgers here and we're just gonna slap them down here on the grill and we're just gonna sear them on both sides. going to be able to do about eight of them right now but that's okay and we don't want to cook them until they're well done because they're going to cook in the gravy as well all right and we're just going to sprinkle some salt on these regular pink himalayan salt or himalayan pink salt uh get the great value brand from walmart nothing too fancy or expensive and we're just going to season one side, a little bit of salt, because the gravy is also going to be salty too. So um, anyway, we're just going to cook these up and then we'll get started on the gravy. So we'll be back. Okay, so our 12 patties are cooked and they are just chilling over here in the plate while we get started on the gravy. Now, um, this is my 14 inch pan. I call it uh, Clifford, my big red pan. <laughs> So uh, this is what we're going to start the gravy in. Okay, so the first ingredient you're gonna need for this, for the brown butter gravy, unsalted butter. I cannot stress how much I say when I say unsalted butter. <laughs> um, because for those of you that have made brown butter, you know how salty it can be. And this gravy, uh, because of the bone broth, has salt in it and I'm also going to be adding some beef bouillon this time around because I don't have enough liquid for the gravy and uh, I know it's you know uh, clean 
bouillon, but it's all I have and we're working with what we got right now. So anyway, we're gonna get this butter melting in the pan right now and then we'll show you the magic of brown butter. So for those of you who've never made brown butter before, it's super simple, super easy. And if you're um, trying to get your fats in, it is the ultimate fat bomb. Um, and all it is is butter. So anyway, we'll be back. P.S. Sorry about the background noise. Um, this is the garage right here and Dan's in there watching TV. So <laughs> if you hear any background noise, it's just him watching TV. Okay, y'all, the butter is melted in the pan. Now we're just gonna keep stirring it until it starts to turn um, a brown color. And you see all this white on top. This is the fat and we want the fat to separate from the liquid. So we're just gonna keep stirring and whisking this until we get to that golden brown that we want. Okay, y'all, as you can see here, it's starting to turn brown here on the bottom. I did turn up the heat a little bit to kind of speed up the process here because I feel like it was just too low. And you're gonna start smelling like a nutty smell, like, um, I don't know if your mom uh, or if you ever made toffee when you were a kid using butter and, oh, man, I just saw butter all over me, um, using butter and brown sugar. But, you know, we don't do, excuse me, we don't do that anymore because sugar is bad for you. <laughs> so this is what it's going to look like here, or what it's starting to look like. And you see these little bubbles here. This is the more of the fat separating. We want it to be almost like a clear brown liquid here. And this is what brown butter looks like. So if you're, this is what I'm doing to make the gravy. But what you can do is pour this into a loaf pan and put it in the freezer, um, lay parchment paper down first, or you can put it in a silicone mold. Um, those little silicone molds I, I do, cause I have these little like heart shaped ones and uh, bunny shaped ones are actually those uh, candy molds that you would get over in like the Wilton section or any kind of baking section at a store. like brown butter to me okay so the next ingredient we were gonna put in here and this is the one I was talking about earlier um, you know how it's not exactly carnivore but it's what I use to thicken the gravy because you know old school country style gravy was flour and bacon grease that's how my mama taught me how to make it so you know we don't do flour anymore, right? Right. So, xanthan gum, okay? When I made this recipe, I used two teaspoons. And we're just gonna sprinkle it in here, just like we would um, if we were doing an old school country gravy recipe. You put the thickener into the grease first, or the butter, if you will. Whisk it in. Okay, and then we're gonna add another teaspoon because when I made this the first time, I started with one teaspoon and then realized I needed two. So we're just gonna go ahead and put the two in here. And if you try to put xanthan gum in regular liquid, it um, clumps up and doesn't uh, dissolve and mix in very well. So just like with flour and baking grease when you made um, old school gravy, same, same concept here. So if you're doing anything else with xanthan gum, you wanna sprinkle in a little tiny bit at a time, whisk it real good, and then just keep adding it until you, you know, get all your stuff in. Okay, so now this is on low, but we're gonna turn it on high get it bubbling really fast, and then we're gonna add our um, beef bone broth, the stuff we have in the cup right now. And we're gonna whisk it in. But we gotta be fast, because we don't want the butter to burn. So I'm gonna keep stirring this to make sure that it doesn't burn.
All right. Now we're going to get her bubbling. And we want it to start thickening up. Now if it gets too thick, you can always add more liquid. That's just going to make it extra gravy, but there's nothing wrong with that, right? Okay. Now that we got it all stirred in, we're going to wait and let it start to bubble and then thicken up. And I'm going to go ahead and get some more water with some beef bouillon to make some more broth. Okay, you guys, so the gravy, this is kind of a long process, but it is ready to go. So I ended up adding another teaspoon of the xanthan gum to thicken it up, and then I added three cups of water out of the four cup measuring cup here I have. And then I added two tablespoons of the beef bouillon. And then I sprinkled a little bit more in there. I didn't really measure. So anyway, we've got it bubbling here. It's nice and thick. And if there's extra gravy, that's okay because I plan on making a chuck roast. And you know, chuck roast with beef gravy on top is gonna be just phenomenal. So. We got the heat on high now, we're just gonna turn it down to just above simmer. And we're gonna start adding our beef patties. Now, when I made this the first time, I could only eat two beef patties with the gravy. It was very, very filling, which is what we want. We want a satiating, um, protein, high fat meal. That's what we're going for, right? So, okay. Sorry, I'm a little noisy. All right, we're going to spoon a little bit of this so that it's covering the meat. And this is great if you are on triple B and E, it kind of breaks up the monotony of, you know, the same old, same old, you know, because it's, you know, triple B and E can be a little restrictive. So, um, so we got these here covered in the gravy. We're gonna put the lid on. We got it on about a little above low. We're gonna simmer these for 20 minutes. So we're gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. And the hamburgers are gonna finish cooking in here, but they're gonna be nice and tender at the same time. So we're just gonna let this go and we'll see you back here in about 20 minutes. Alrighty, you guys, it has been 20 minutes. So we're gonna take the lid off here. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the heat as well. So you've got some nice tender ground beef patties here swimming in beef gravy. All right, we're gonna go ahead and plate this. We're gonna let it cool for just a couple minutes because it is super hot. And then we are going to do a taste test for y'all. Okay, y'all, so we're testing the Salisbury steak, seeing how everybody likes it. Just eat it. Mmm, that's better than last time. Not as salty. Huh? It's not as salty. Yeah, I said I stress. I cannot stress how much you need to use unsalted butter for this. <laughs> it's good. It just needs mashed potatoes. Uh. It's good.
This is it right here. Salisbury steak, carnivore style. It's kid and dad approved. Well, dad's over there. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all make this recipe. Let me know how you like it. And uh, anyway, we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>